races very rarely free on a Tuesday. Unfortunately, we had a cancellation spot and he grabbed it. And we're happy to have him here. So, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Mike Daly, you may have seen me on Mike McIntyre's road show. I was in the fourth row. <laughs> Give us a cheer if you've been to live comedy before. Hey! Give us a cheer if you haven't. Give us a cheer if you haven't been to live comedy for the sake of this joke. Hey! <laughs> you might want to watch the show through that. Uh... Totally <laughs> worth bringing that prop down, wasn't it? <laughs> Very reliant, aren't we, on Google these days? Every time you don't know something, somebody goes, oh, just Google it, mate, just Google it, mate. Personally, I find it quite unreliable. Every time I've asked it, the world's youngest person has given me a different answer. <laughs> <laughs> there was a fire at Google headquarters recently. Staff there searched for fire extinguishers. I got 1.3 million results. <laughs> The world's oldest person died last week. I don't know if you saw this. It was a woman. She was 117. The last person, surviving person, to have been born in the 1800s. Oh, wow. Authorities said they were not going to perform an autopsy, which I found rather odd, because I've been quite intrigued as to see what the world's oldest person had died of. In fact, I think that would have been the first thing that I'd have done, is order an autopsy. Next thing I'd have done, I'd have asked the world's second oldest person where they were on the night in question. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about Bigfoot lately. <laughs> <laughs> a strange name, isn't it, to give an animal Bigfoot? Also, if they're trying to divert attention away, the fact that his other foot. <laughs> he's really, really small. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying, he's the Jeremy Beadle of the animal world. <laughs> <laughs> as a, as a, my day job, I'm a, I'm a van driver, and I had to deliver a parcel to this American firm in Hanover Square the other day. Very posh building. It was all glass and stainless steel. And they were up on the second floor. As I got into the lift, I noticed something very unusual. There were no buttons in this lift at all. It was just a little speaker. And from it emitted a voice which said, kindly state your flaws. And I thought, I'm quite late, often untidy. What's that going to do with you? <laughs> that has gone better previously, I must admit. Um, at my work, in the gents' toilet for some reason, they've got their mission statement on the wall, which I'm going to read for you now. It says, our objectives for April 2017 are to have the right people with the right skills and attitude in the right place at the right time. And I thought, I'm so glad I work here because I'd hate to work at one of those places that have the right people with the right skills and attitude in the right place, but at the wrong time. <laughs> or better still, one of those places that have the wrong people with the right skills. <laughs> Get on board, people. There's 27 different versions of this. <laughs> like a lot of comedians, I was thinking of going up to the Edinburgh Festival, so I wrote an email to my work saying, uh, please note, I am going to be away at the festival from the 1st of August to the 31st of August. Please can you provide cover? And they wrote back and they said, uh, as you work for an agency and you're self-employed, you have to provide your own cover. It'd be different if you were ill. So I said, please no, I will be ill from the 1st of August to the 1st of August. Uh, a quick bit now, I'm going to have to speed through this bit now. Um, I've often wondered what the word lady meant. Uh, I asked a previous audience and they said it's, uh, it's a woman who sleeps you on a fourth date. Or it's a part of the submarine, because that was a guy who wanted to throw my sex, he'd seen me before. <laughs> <laughs> but I found the answer to this in a very unusual place. I was watching a video on YouTube. It's Spike Milligan being interviewed by Joanna Lumley on an episode of Wogan because Wogan was ill. 
And underneath the video, there's a comment by a guy called Johnny Bagwash in which he says, I lived near Joanna Lovely in the 1980s, a lovely girl. When a paedophile was beaten up on our road, she witnessed it, but said nothing to the police. <laughs> what a lady. So uh, now you know. I'm your Mike Danny. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you much for your MC. I'm really the general of your all from Mr. Mike.